Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I made uh, a video a little while ago um, talking about my initial impressions in relation to the then newly launched Christian Louboutin lipsticks and lip liners. And uh, if you watch that one, you will know I was um, pretty unimpressed initially with the um, first one that I bought, which was this one. It was the uh, Silky Satin edition of the classic Le Boutin Red. And uh, I also bought a lip liner. And uh, I didn't... Oh, I absolutely hated the lip liner. <laughs> and uh, I still do. I've got rid of it, in fact. And um, this Le Boutin Red, uh, which I reviewed fairly thoroughly, I'll... Um, put the links below um, you'll recall I wasn't overly impressed with certainly for the price I um, thought you could do just as well with a cheap quality lipstick and uh, so I was pretty scathing about the whole uh, Louboutin lipstick range uh, and now what do you see you see that I've got two more and you're entitled to ask what are you playing at the answer is, um, I was given another one from the range uh, as a Christmas gift, just before Christmas, in fact. It was also one of the Silky Satin range, and I believe this one is called Trey Décolleté. Um, one of the annoying facets of the packaging, which in some respects is beautiful. I mean, it is quality and heavy, as I described before. I hate the kind of gauzy ribbons that come with so that you can hang them around your neck. You'll see I've got rid of um, the ribbons and the boxing. Um, and I do think that these are a bit awkward to put in your handbag. But, I mean, they are fairly quality. Uh, I love the fact that Le Boutin is kind of engraved there and the inner red in the cap. Uh, what I don't like is it doesn't tell you anywhere on the actual bullet what the shade is that you've got if you decide you liked it. So you've got to go back and... Um, look at the box. Anyway, I do like this one. Um, so I don't know whether I would have uh, decided to pick it out for myself, but as gifts go, it was a very nice gift indeed. And I found myself wearing this shade a lot uh, in the round to Christmas and since. It's um, a very basic uh, mid-toned pink nude, I would say. Uh, with a touch of coral there. Uh, it pulls quite warm on me. It's a nice uh, hydrating formula. Uh, it doesn't have enormous staying power, but it lasts quite nicely. Um, and so this has become something of a favourite. Now, I will say it's very, it's not a spectacular colour, is it? Let's face it. Um, I think it's very, very similar to an old favourite of mine, Tom Ford's uh, Spanish pink and I think this is a favorite of a lot of people um, there you see Spanish pink coming across um, more pigmented and slightly warmer but um, on the lips these two look almost identical um, to me the Le Boutin because it's slightly less opaque slightly more slippery uh, is slightly more flattering if your lips aren't in great condition I think um, but if you have Spanish pink you pretty much have tray décolleté and of course uh, expensive though Spanish pink is um, the Le Boutin is even pricier so I wouldn't say you know rush out and buy a Le Boutin just because I found one that I quite like um, but on the back of um, reconsidering the range, as it were, having got that present, I then um, ordered, when it came back in stock, one of the matte um, range, because I noticed it was the matte shades that were most consistently sold out uh, on the couple of websites that stock Le Boutin and the shops. Um, so I figured there was possibly something about the mattes that uh, was worth looking at. Now, I'm not a great matte lipstick fan because I generally feel that they are um, drying and because I'm older, they're going to show up the, you know, areas around the edges of my lips that I'd rather not um, show up, as it were. Uh, but I decided I would go for one of the nudes. And I think this one is called 
barely there. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to get any help looking at the um, bullet. There it is. Um, a very, very basic nude, really. Um, quite pink toned, looking more browny on the skin. Looks very brown on my hand there. On my lips, uh, it's a definite my lips but better um, and I'm quite fair with um, cool toned lips um, tending towards the you know kind of bluey red pink lips. Um, so it actually gives my mouth really good definition um, if I just want to look polished and I have found myself wearing this a lot. Uh, it is actually for a matte lipstick incredibly moisturizing. I don't feel that I have to specifically prep my lips, which I would generally do certainly before a matte lipstick by, you know, perhaps putting some lip balm on while I'm doing the rest of my makeup before applying any lipstick. I don't really need to do that with this formulation. Uh, it lasts better than the silky satin. Um, not quite as long as some of the people who rave about not having to touch up at all all day. I do wonder if these people ever drink a cup of coffee or have anything to eat because I definitely do need to touch up. But it, it does last a, a good few hours. And I do think it's an impressive formulation. Now, I have to say, as I say, I have very few mattes in my collection. I do like the um, Chanel Velvet Matte range. I haven't found a good nude in that range, but I do like the consistency. I would say this one lasts a little bit better, um, but otherwise they're much of a muchness in terms of how they feel on the mouth. Uh, but as I say, I haven't yet managed to find a good um, nude in the um, Chanel Velvet. Uh, I have a few MAC mattes and I find them quite difficult to wear. I definitely have to prep my lips a lot. Um, as you would expect, you're not paying anything like what you're paying for this. And I haven't tried, I don't think, I might have one, um, but I'm struggling to remember if I have. I don't think I've tried any of the um, Tom Ford mattes. So I haven't got a huge range of quality matte lipstick experience to compare this Labutin with. Um, but I do like it, so I thought it was worth coming back on and slightly amending my hugely negative um, review of the Labutin range. I still think they are ridiculously overpriced, um, but obviously a bit less so if you find something that you really can wear every day uh, and that's doing a great job um, without, you know, drying your lips out, then, you know, the price becomes a bit more palatable. Uh, I think the packaging, I still think the packaging is ridiculously gaudy, but I know a lot of people love it. And so therefore, I thought it was worth saying that if you are, um, you know, hell bent on spending 60 quid on a beautiful lipstick, then it might be worth looking at the matte range rather than the others. I haven't tried the, um, the least opaque range, the uh, Sheer Voile. Uh, I know people say it's one of their favourites, but it really doesn't seem worthwhile to me to spend that amount of money on um, basically a lip tint, but, you know, each to their own. Um, I'm still not wearing the red a lot. Let me show you. It's even, I don't know if you can see, not very well in the monitor. It's getting that slightly kind of frosted look, which is not very good given I've not had it all that long. And you can see I've barely worn it. I mean, it's a beautiful colour. Um, but as I say, I, I do find some of the uh, slightly more reasonable ranges deliver just as good um, a silky red as that one. But uh, barely there, definitely worth looking at. I'm actually down on a waiting list for another of the slightly darker nude shades, Rucker Cot, I think that's how you pronounce it, but she's been sold out forever. Um, so, uh, you know, you may want to have a look at the mats or you may want to um, save yourself for uh, one of the slightly cheaper ranges. Uh, I'm going to talk about some Tom Ford lip products as I reassess the new eye releases 
very soon um, because I've got a few things to say about the palettes and the creams now that I've tried them. Um, but I'm a lot more positive about uh, Lips and Boys as ever and the new um, kind of liquid lipsticks that have come out as well. But uh, until then, bye for now.